Eric Worsing, I want to introduce every guitar nerds. I want just an uh, old, old uh, compadre of mine. We were the two ball compadre. guys years ago, taught guitar um, together. And his name is Eric Worsing. I wanted, we want to do a thing today that, that is honoring Edward Van Halen. And I, when I'm thinking about this, you're you're kind of like the authority figure that I know, that knows. Well, thank you. Because you, you know, you you do all the. Uh, <laughs> you know all the dweedly stuff that I that, that the, I, the, I only approximate. But you're the noodling you're, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Edward Van Halen, July twenty six. Mm. 1955 to 2000 uh or to october 6 2020 he um both of us the, even though we have different musical paths he affected us both greatly and what i want to do today and i wanted to ask go back and forth with you is like let, what the effect of this guy this musician had on both of our lives as musicians and otherwise possibly so when did yeah. you first discover van halen well, that, first of all, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I definitely appreciate it. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I it's shaved my head. Here. I literally shaved my head for you today. So okay. it was nice yeah, and freshly shaved. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was long. I gone, I gone purple for you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I, I was thinking about the question you just asked earlier today and I've, you know, I've thought, I've actually thought about it many times. Um, the first, I remember I started guitar probably when I was about 12 years old, I got a guitar for Christmas and, um, you know, soon after that, I started hanging out with, uh, you know, some friends at school, uh, who played guitar. And, uh, one of those guys was Mark. And, uh, I remember he let me borrow a cassette tape. Um, I think this is when I must have been a freshman in high school, something like that. I, I just remember him handing it to me at the front of the school. <clears throat> and I think it was the first album, actually. And I took it home and listened to it. I was just floored. It was I couldn't believe someone could play like that. And yeah. it it wasn't just the playing sounded like impossible. Like, how can a human being do that? It just sounded cool and there was a whole it's like a it's like eddie eddie's personality exuded through his music that he made and that that's the holy grail of yeah. being a musician and a guitar player and his his the personality that came out of his playing was so strong it just was undeniable yeah you know even though if you look at his style there was bits and you can like find bits and pieces of where he picked it up from. I mean, there were people who tapped before him. Yeah, you know, there's but, like a you know, jazz and people, guy. Uh, yeah, Harvey Mandel. Yeah. Or and, everybody yeah, there's Harvey Mandel, but but to Ed's defense, nobody saw it in its Technicolor greatness. Nobody yeah. saw it as for what the big thing that it was until Eddie. Yeah, and, and I think oh, was, sorry, he, go ahead, bro. He was a teacher. He, opened, yeah. he was like the Jimi Hendrix of the late seventies. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, like people had tapped before, cause there's like a jazz guy online who's doing this yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And then there's that you guy know, who plays a ukulele in the thirties. Yeah. And I mean, so it, it had probably been done and there's other guitar players mm -hmm. who probably brought this hand in, but there was like that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's well known that Eddie, learned every Clapton solo, even though it doesn't really sound like it. But Ed, you, the thing is, is that Eddie put it all into a package that was his own thing. Yeah. And it just, 
you know, just blasted us in the face, you know, and I think he's like the first celebrity that has passed away during my life that I, it really like, I, I felt it. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though I obviously like, I don't know the guy, Yeah, yeah. but he's, he's been in such, he's been like a part of my life. Such an influence. Like That's what I think. So musicians, uh, normal human beings that aren't musicians don't understand that these people, even though we never met them, they can be our mentors and somebody like Van Halen, as I said, for our generation, and I'm not even, I'm older than you. Okay, oh, so. I did, I did not know that. Our generation, our generation, we were, we're probably 10 years apart or something like that. But my generation, Eddie Van Halen was like, that was like, as I said, the Jimi Hendrix. I remember, and uh, I don't know if Jeremy Fitzke is watching this, but I remember gym class and we were in the swimming pool and we almost got into an altercation because he swore that Jimi Hendrix was the best guitar player in the world. And I was like, no, it's Van Halen. Okay. So for me, it was, uh, <laughs> my first Van Halen record was Diver Down. I know I went backwards, <laughs> but then I, then after I got that, I got like the first four, like the Columbia house records for one yeah. penny or something like that. So, and that, that was like a, as a kid, I, I will, I will say what you're saying is like, it sounded like it was impossible. Okay, yeah. even though we, as lifelong guitar players, know it's not impossible, but he had that spirit, that spirit of fearlessness, and he knew some of the rules, but a lot of the times he, you know, he was just like, let's buy the seat of your pants, and if it happens really, really fast, we can make up our own rules. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to do this the way yeah. everybody else was, and that, this is, thing, these are things that I know I appreciate, that fearlessness. Okay, that elect you know that electricity, <laughs> and it's yeah. like uh, all the stuff that uh, that inspired you to get to Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, you know, I I have kind of a philosophy on like, and none of us, I guess, will ever really know like what is it that made Eddie Van Halen so special. But um, I look at it as kind of like whenever people are like doing the whole uh, you know who's the best guitar player thing. Yeah. I always kind of go back to Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen because, and here's why, because number one, I I would say, I would call them guitar messiahs. They make such a profound impact that it's undeniable that they existed afterwards. Mm -hmm. And Jimi Hendrix was the first like electric guitar player that was that big. The the analogy is is absolutely on point. Yeah. And then Eddie, Eddie was the second. We yeah. have not had an, another guitar messiah since. Yeah. I think that the the environment has to be right for it to happen mm-hmm. before it happens again. You know, maybe, I hope it happens maybe, again. And I, I don't, and I, maybe we could include, I don't even know if he would be a messiah, but like the Stevie Ray Vaughan, that yeah. camp inspired, Eddie Van Halen inspired so many people. In other words, it's like once you once you heard what he did, you're not going to say no to it. Yeah. Okay. But Stevie Ray Vaughan, he didn't. I don't know that he did all that anything new. He was vibing. He was vibing Hendrix, and he was vibing all the uh, uh, Chicago and Texas blues guys, but also Kenny Burrell and West Montgomery and funk and all this kind of stuff. But I know if we go to a blues club. We're not going to a blues club. We're going to a Stevie Ray Vaughan tribute party. <laughs> you know, the, he's that influential. But anyway, so the Eddie Van Halen. So what are your, so some of your favorite ideas that he has done? Like on a, on a guitar, let's, 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 let's have fun with this. Mm, I love. So what did he do that was different? Because people that don't know. Well, you know, it, the first thing was like just, tapping, you know, bringing this hand over, yeah, well, and you know, the reason I think it worked is because Eddie tinkered with his amp to pull out more saturation and distortion, which your guitar has to have like a touch sensitivity, and it changes how this sounds, it makes it sound really... You know, like that, or like harmonics. 
You know, and Eddie would do like, you know, he was a master of harmonics, you know, like with you know, those kind of things. Um, one of my favorite things he did though, is the intro to Mean Streets where he's like. Almost like drums on a guitar. Yeah. And I mean, I think he got that from like space stuff, you know, slapping, you know. Yeah. Um, but I always loved this thing he only did live. It's on uh, the, the live album three. It's I think the album is called three, six. No, it's called Right Here, Right Now. OK. And that's like when Sammy was in the band. But he does this live solo and he does this. I hope I can remember it. So he's kind of like this the imagination, like the, the imagination incarnate, kind of like the just go nuts with the imagination. And he completely, yeah. he completely gave us a uh, a palette of, of 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 fun stuff to explore in our own way. If we're gonna be if we're gonna be honest about it, we got We got to take his stuff and, and make it our own. But uh, yeah, so um, him is well, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say what like. Other than like riffs, you know, like harmonics, his rhythm playing, his performance, the way he looked, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, that it, he was the most well-rounded guitar player. Like he, everything was, all eyes were dotted and T's yeah, crossed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I always, one of the things that were, was one of my favorite things that he would always do was, and I loved this song, Dance the Night Away. <laughs> And he would use this slap back echo, like where it would be like, dun, 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 dun. like you could hear it on like. Yeah. Yeah, even, even like his, the, even his effects he used in such a mature and tasteful way. Yeah, yeah. But it, I think to me that that's, what made Eddie special to all of us is he reignited the love for guitar. He innovated, he like spurred a whole like genre and legions, even to this day mm -hmm. of people. And his genius even, is even still probably 20 or 30 years of, of guitar players. We are, we are, uh, we are coming back to it. We're, words, yeah. We're, we're still thinking about it. Yeah. 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 In other words, it stopped for a while because of the whole, uh, Nirvana thing that anything, anybody who could play, was kind of like uh, they they started denying that they could play, and they they just wanted to, <laughs> they just wanted to keep a record deal. But as a, I actually lived in Olympia, Washington, which is an when, hour from Seattle. When Nirvana broke. Yes. Yeah, so here's me, like, look yeah. at me, guys. You know, and uh -huh. then Nirvana broke, and I remember I could I could just do something like this, you know, and everyone would be like. Yeah. And then when Nirvana came out, nobody cared anymore. And I was in like Nirvana Central. I did not like Nirvana back then, but I do now. I yeah, appreciate them for, they're like the great songwriters yeah. and, and lyricists. We and didn't, I, in other words, yeah, I didn't have the mature years to understand it at the time. Yeah. I was just like, it's not Eddie Van Halen guitar stuff. So I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately I lived in grunge central, you know, yeah. for in that era, you know, but. I think actually Kurt Cobain's house was in downtown Olympia, one of his houses he left okay. in. Okay. But sorry, go ahead with what you're saying though. So him as a rhythm guitar player and as a songwriter and all that kind of stuff. So as a rhythm guitar player, one of the things that like, okay, we're going to get to the, the favorite tracks. I'm going to say one of my favorite tracks is I'm the one. Oh yeah, mine too. Okay, now I'm not just gonna say this because of Eddie. I'm gonna say this because of the whole band. Uh, don't forget, I, I actually have a cover online of that. Okay, I just noticed that uh, like yesterday, or the day before. I didn't know you yeah, had I, all those because I, I knew you did. I knew you did Eruption, but it's like 
this is why Eric Worsing is here today, everybody, because he does all these things at, you know, as close to no perfect. As I said, I bow to you, your skills, is like, I, I get kind of right. You know, my, that's my attention span. It's like a, I get the sound. You get well, the you, notes. You know, you, you have your own things that you're mm-hmm. really good at. I, I've, since I was a kid, um, I remember I could, I, I'd been playing for about three years and I remember doing my, this is the first band I got into. I did uh, Eruption into the Crossroads solo with Steve Vai. Mm-hmm. I did that for a talent show. I lost because like some, some of the football. You know what I did for a talent show? What's that? Bruins Bane. Oh, wow. Rush. Wow. (laughs) Hey, I'm in a Rush tribute band. I don't know how to play that. Yeah. No, I I practiced it for six months and I got on stage and flubbed. Oh, that's hard though. That's all. Yeah. That's why why I don't do it. I did it the next year and I, I wrote my own piece and it was on 12 string guitar and it was, Live, doesn't he go into the trees or yeah, or Farewell to Kings from that? I think he, I think he goes directly into. I don't even know what it sounds like anymore. Yeah, it's, it's like you start playing guitar. When were you born? I was born in 1977. Okay, so it wasn't that old. Okay, so this was probably 1986, 85. I I should be a grunge person, but I yeah. just got hooked on the 80s guitar noodly stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, sorry. Um, where were, oh, so I'm the yeah, one. So, so I'm the one. It's like to me, Van Halen. They were cooler than the rest for the purpose because my my thing is when you take contrasting style, seemingly contrasting styles, and you bring it all to the thing. They were not just they were not just a a, a, a serial rock and roll band. They borrowed from swing. They borrowed from uh, blues. They borrowed from like acoustic blues, they've done all kinds of different pop music, Motown. They did a lot of that other stuff, but the swing really comes through on that song. And yeah. Eddie's fearlessness and how he goes back and forth between the lead and the rhythm. And it is just so much fireworks. That, that, uh, as I said, as a, as a whatever 13-year-old kid that I was, that is what I needed to see because that's imagination. Mm. And it's like, I think we still need imagination. Go ahead, show us. Isn't it? I, I, it's been a while, but. Um... That's what I'm talking about, exact note for note. So that imagine that with that ride symbol. Like that and 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 kind of like the, the really fast swing kind of thing yeah. that Alex Van Halen is doing. That's what everybody doesn't understand. So nowadays everybody wants to compartmentalize stuff that I play rock and roll or I play pop music or I play you know, what they were doing is they were taking everything and putting it into their gumbo. Like it's very true. Like Jimi Hendrix did, like the Beatles did. That those are all my favorite bands that seem to have done that. Okay, so um, uh, your top four songs by Van Halen, Eddie Van, was would, it Eddie Van Halen. Let's keep it to Eddie Van Halen. The top four I, Eddie Van Halen tracks. I would say one would be "I'm the One." That's definitely one of my favorites. Okay. Um, "Dance the Night Away." Mm-hmm. I just always loved that song um hot for teachers just awesome Mm -hmm. i mean that this that i that i just even the video is awesome that is i forgot about that one (laughs) (laughs) even uh then the other one would definitely be like mean streets you know okay um i those are my favorites but uh, you know the the favorites change too but yeah yeah, I, i do love those songs i mean but yeah such a lineage of awesome stuff you know even the um for unlawful carnal knowledge album Mm -hmm. was just like he actually used his old amp the original marshall on that okay 
that was like the I think the last there was one after that but you could tell something was going on that was weird okay. but that that was to me like the last like truly great Van Halen album unfortunately the one after that was balance yeah that had like Amsterdam and 19, 19, 1995 I got married to Van Halen Cindy David is out there if she's out there she and Stacy Young sang, uh, it's not enough no what, what's it was like a ballad off of the I think it was the balance album oh yeah I think I know what you're talking about yeah it was it was it sounded like Chicago it sounded like David Foster <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my top four. I'm yes. What are your top erup four? Eruption has to. We say top four. I'm gonna go with top five. I don't have. Okay. If we get top five, I'm adding eruption in too. Okay. So of course you got to say that because it showed you what is possible. On the yeah, that, that one's so, that one's almost a, like a default pick. Yeah, there's a there's a new guy in town, and we can't uh, we can't we can't understate that enough. Exactly. Um, so, um, so that is the first one. The second one is, I'm the one as we said. I like I, I like to light up the Two. sky. I that is a very awesome one. What is, is that? The, <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah, been yeah. on such a long time. I don't remember how to play. Well, no, that, whatever. No, that's your DNA. That's your folk music. Yes, it is. That's why you're it, here. So that's three so far. Okay. And can you just, three. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna say you're a nut over this one. Big Bad Bill is Sweet William now, off a of diver down. You know, I don't, I don't have anything against that. That's an so awesome this is, song. This was a bum, this, bum, 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 this was bum, Eddie Van Halen playing swing with his dad on clarinet. Jan Van Halen. Yeah. Doesn't that song go? Nope. Oh, big bad Bill is sweet. William now. Yeah, it's the okay. It's kind of yeah. like the. Uh, it does not acapella. sound like Eddie. Sounds like on any other song. I was thinking of the full bug, I think is what That's it's That's a wonderful song too. He hates that album. I think that there's a couple of songs off that album that are absolutely astounding. A lot of people actually think that that album is like raw Van Halen. Uh-huh. You know, the, the rawest Van Halen album. Uh -huh. Like, cause there was a lot of, I guess on the first album, uh, Ted Templeman or Ed Landy or one of those guys did a lot of mixing and changing of things. Mm -hmm you know, before it came out, even though we all love it. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't love but, it. Yeah. Which is weird. He hates Ain't Talking About Love, which everybody likes. Yeah. He thought that was a punk rock song. Yeah. That's what Eddie it. Van Halen hears as punk rock. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You, I think you got, you have four so far. All right. So what let's, we gotta, we, I gotta, I gotta do Unchained because it's, I'm a rocker. That's, that's part of me. And it's like that, uh, yeah there you go you know it's funny like even a song like that there's so many little nuances that you don't really realize he mm -hmm. puts in there that make him sound like eddie absolutely and, yet, and probably and this is one thing about that era of bands that i think is it's not i mean i'm sure there's bands who do it still Mm -hmm. but I don't think there's as many. Van Halen basically was, they played it, I think, Gazzari's as the house band. For, I mean, and they were on the strip for like five to seven years before they got found. They were playing as the house band, like five days a week, mm -hmm. like four sets. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to like build your, um, if you want to yes. pay your dues and yeah. put the work in to like sharpen you for, well, that's like the Beatles. Beatles. That's like the Beatles in Hamburg. That's yeah. why the Beatles were better than everyone else. Yeah. Like the Beatles, better than Stones, Stones, the Stones, the Kinks, all those guys. They have forty-five minute sets. The Beatles played all night. Yeah, it's, okay, uh, it's the same kind of deal. The, it's. I don't know if you can even find clubs that let you do that. I don't know. 
Well, not not in not in Pennsylvania. Hey, I think though I'm I'm optimistic though about this upcoming year. I think mm -hmm. I think that there's going to be a boom in music, and I there's going to be some changes and in innovation because whenever countries and it, it's the entire world that got affected by this. Mm -hmm. I think when that happens and we've kind of all had to suffer through this, when we come out of it on the other end, you know, it, it changes things. And, yeah. you know, it's, I think that we're gonna see some cool stuff. I mean, the world wars, you know, after those um, people, we had yeah. a lot of the greatest growth in countries that you've, you've seen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Not that I want world wars or anything. Oh know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In other words, all this, all this, stuff that we're, we're encountering now is going to breed new technologies and it's going to yeah. be new opportunities and new in a new world i just and don't want robots that play guitar though like, yeah I, no. I don't well i want to go back to uh when humans didn't have to rely on robots to get their uh timing correct oh <laughs> a so, quant quanti quantizate what yeah, is it quantitization yeah yeah so anyway eric Thank you for this. And then we're going to get back with you because we're going to get your story, your story at some future day. Okay. That'd be great, man. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 It's fun. It is. And, uh, and uh, this is a, as I said, we're paying, uh, we, we love guitar nerds paying homage to Jimmy or yeah. What am I saying? Eddie Van Halen and Jimi Hendrix, but Eddie Van Halen this time. Okay. Uh, RIP. Okay. And, uh, and I will see you. I will see you soon. We will figure another time out for your your story. We want to get yeah, man. together. Well, now that we've reconnected, we'll have to keep in touch more. Absolutely, absolutely, and thank you. And now Eric is also let's let's uh, push your. He is in a Rush tribute band. That, as I said, Eric is the beast when it comes to. And I I'm, I'm serious. This is like a note for note like Rush. Uh, you did that at the the moving pictures album from front to, from edge to edge. I'm I'm a good mimicker. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He not so I'm, much. I've but noticed I, that ever since I was a kid. Yeah. I noticed I was able to mimic players pretty yeah. well. I mean, you can never get a hundred percent, but yeah. So. But even yeah. So anyway, so uh, you have a, you have a good one and uh, be safe. Uh, tell your lovely wife I said hello, and. Uh, and we'll, as I said, we'll get together and we'll figure out another time for your, your, your story. You get your story. Yeah. All yeah, right, man. I, I appreciate you bringing me on and uh, this was fun and definitely I'll talk to you in a couple of days. All righty. See you then. Be well. All right. See you, man. Mm -hmm.